And now it's time to talk some Browns, and our Browns yeah. talk is brought to us by Lincoln Electric, looking and hiring for great jobs. They are the region's leader in manufacturing and welding. Lincoln Electric, check them out. Very good. Um, we've got. How do you want to play this? You want to go right into Browns, do do this Brown stuff, and then we're gonna do some Brown stuff. Yeah, and I'll, I'll set it up here at yeah, the so owners meeting this week. Jimmy Haslam was asked essentially if there is a playoff or bust situation here for the coaching staff and a lot of the players on the right. Browns. And he said the answer in an elongated fashion, so I condensed it into a uh, sot here, so we take it full here. But essentially what he said was, and this is Jimmy Haslam, I think that we have expectations to go to the playoffs, but I'm not going to say if we don't make it, X, Y, Z happens because that'll be the headline tomorrow. Listen, the AFC is tough. You've all been around. Our division is tough. But he went on to say the expectation is certainly the playoffs. Yeah. Knowing but, what we know. Yeah. Can I, can I run Hunt. that through the BS translator? Yeah. You're getting fired if you don't go make the playoffs. It, it's a yep. non-ultimatum ultimatum. I mean, yep. well, I, I, mean, I don't even look at it that way. He said, I'm not going to say you're getting fired if you don't make the playoffs because that will be the headline. Right. He didn't say, I'm not going to say that because that's not true. Right. I, I, I would say, listen, we, first of all, the caveat you always got to say is you never know with Jimmy because he does his own thing. I, I would think there are, like, Let's say uh, there are a hundred scenarios that the Browns don't make the playoffs. Hundred different things right. lead to the Browns not making the playoffs. I would say there's five to ten of those things that they could not make the playoffs, and maybe you'd still keep them. Right. Let's say the Browns won ten games and lost a tiebreaker to lose that last spot. Are you firing the coach off of that? Probably I not. probably wouldn't. Probably not. Let's I say, think he can survive. I think others right. might be in trouble. Let's say the Browns are. <clears throat> Nine and three. And then Deshaun Watson gets hurt, misses the last five games, and they don't. Like, there are sure. weird scenarios like that. Yeah. But outside of those things, like, if they just are not good this year, it's he's out. Yeah. It's he's gone. I, I think and everybody's if, gone. I think if they win fewer than nine games, like, if, if, if you're eight and nine, Oh, my God. And you're taking a step backwards. I think that's the – you want the continue. You want to be going in the right direction. And this, this program was going in the right direction, and then it went down twice. Man. Yes. Now so, I got to have I gotta have improvement. He's right. The AFC is extremely tough. We all know this. It's a this beast. is as good as the A. I think there's a bigger differential between the AFC and the NFC than we've seen in a long time. I would agree with that. The AFC is very tough. Yeah. There's no guarantee, even if Watson plays great, that the Browns are definitely going to make the playoffs. But if, if Watson does play reasonably well, even if he's not as good as Houston – but way better than he was last year. He's he's just very good next year. The expectation is they should make the playoffs. Even if they're the seventh seed. Yeah. They got to be in. At the very least, they have to be in the hunt minimum. And legitimately. Not like the 12th team on the board because they're 5-8. and eight, You know right. what I mean? My, like, they, I, I think if they don't make the playoffs, there's a 90% chance everybody's gone. This is why I always, I was told, always you know, talk about new coaches. Yeah. New coaches, when they come in, you know, they have this false sense of security that they got three, five, six years to come in, turn everybody over, get their quarterback. You don't have time for that. You're like, you, you, you got to win and make progress on the fly. And, you know, my mom used to always tell me, like, we used to have these intern report cards. And she would be like, it's always easier to start well during the semester than, than starting bad and trying to make up those grades because – you have very little room for error. If you had only got two tests, you, you got a final and a midterm, right? And you got some homework to turn in in a paper. If you bomb the midterm, you got to be perfect on the paper. You got to be perfect on, on, on the homework. You just gotta, to get up to a C. Just to get to a C. Yeah, it's and, like a grade point average and a batting average. And now you see the Browns and you're like, they're like, well, wow. The fans are like, well, why, where is this pressure coming from? Why is this, this urgency? And we're like, well, listen, you, you didn't draft well, so pretty much you had to spend all your free agent dollars in fixing the things that you didn't do well. You didn't draft, so now you got to fill those holes. And now your cap is a certain way, and you don't have room for error for injuries. So it's like, yeah, we only got one line of players. If they get injured, now we got some guys coming in. It, it's too much to be doing in one year. That's why when people say on Twitter, yeah, G, but you can't get too excited because you can't do everything in one year. I say, yeah, I know, 
but you punted last year. <laughs> so well, you got it. Yeah. You got it. I always suggest spreading things out and making m incremental moves to get yourself better into a point where, hey, I don't got to have that much pressure. When I look at the Browns, I see a roster that is, cap in my opinion, is capable. <gasps> it doesn't mean anything. Listen, anything's possible to the extreme. I think the realistic scenario for the Browns, the realistic best case scenario is they're the fourth best team in the AFC. To me, that's the realistic. Does it, that's the high end. That's the realistic best case scenario. I would agree with that. They could be even higher than that, but that's a minuscule chance. But real, like somewhat reasonable best case scenario to me is they're the fourth best team heading into the playoffs. That doesn't mean they couldn't go to the Super Bowl if they were, but whatever. Right. And to me, the roster, they should be n no worse than the eighth or ninth best team. Now, yeah. you could say, well, that's not good enough. Eighth that's or not ninth playoffs. I, I, but I'm saying like, that. I, I don't agree. I don't agree. I, I, I top think four, top four is not their city. If everything work out well, I think they could beat the Bills and I think they could beat the Bengals. I, I see, don't. Okay. I'm just telling you right now, G, like going into the season, there's no way, like anything's possible. Good money's going to pick them but, at best fourth. Good right. money. The, because could, could they? Yes. I can't pick Deshaun Watson ahead of Burrow and, and Allen right now. Those guys have played great and Watson hasn't for right. two years. Mm -hmm. And it's not like the Browns have this major advantage in other spots. There are some areas in the roster they have advantages over those teams, but not enough in the rest of the team that I could say, well, it's a, so if you're, I'm just saying, of course, it's possible. Browns can be the number one seed next year. Anything's possible. You're saying right? it's not likely. I'm just saying of the likely the scenarios, the okay. things that I think are a, a 20 percent chance the or better of happening money is okay. going to have them is, is no between higher than fourth. the fourth and ninth best team. And I think and that's I fair. think their their highest scenario is they're the sixth or seventh team in the AFC, which is good enough to make the playoffs. The roster is good enough to make the playoffs. If they don't, again, outside of another Deshaun injury. Uh, a bizarre tiebreaker where they win 10 the games outside of those slim circumstances. There's no excuse. If yeah. they finish eight and nine, nine and eight, and they're healthy, I want everybody out. I want the coach out. I want the GM out. I'll keep Schwartz and, 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 uh, and Bubba because they're here the first year, but I want the head coach and the GM the hell out of here. If they don't make the playoffs. Yeah, or I, pretty much. I, I, you, like you said, it is, you know, it's got, you got to look at it. You got to see what, right. what happens. But I think the, the crazy thing is, G. Bush, when you say, I, 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 don't, I disagree with that, the, the, the Browns last year, I always say this, there were just, the, the gap was too big between their low and their high. Remember, they beat the Bengals handily at the end of October with a backup quarterback. When I, just, when I look at that version of the Browns, I say what you just said. Hell yeah, they can beat the Bengals. Hell yeah, they can be top two or three in the in the AFC because that's the team that we need to see. The problem with the Browns is it was like this. Well, and I it think it was too up and down. And I know everybody's yeah, up and down. Everybody, but you can't beat the team who's running for the Super Bowl two years in a row. Right. The Bengals were right there. Right. And and then lose to the Jets and the Falcons right. in the manner that and, you did. But th that's the thing. That's the difference in the good teams and the bad teams is. Even even the mediocre teams, except for maybe the worst three or four teams, even the mediocre, you know, below average teams, they'll have a couple of games like the Browns did where they look great. And you're like, well, yeah. why can't it? But the teams that are great play that way consistent. Not every game, right. but cons look at more the, often than not play at that level. When you look level. at the Chiefs and the Eagles' low points last year, they were they were acceptable. They, the Eagles' worst game of the year, yeah. they won. Now, remember, they, they almost lost to the Colts who were, you know, widely regarded as the worst team in the league. Yeah. They almost lost to them. They played a terrible game. But at the end, they found a way to do what winners well, do and pull yeah. it out. The Bengals, and the Browns found a way to lose those games. The Bengals lost to the Browns. Was their only bad game really all I year. I know it was. And Every you know other what? game they lost was a field goal Two game. Two years ago, it was almost exactly the same exactly. thing. Exactly. I, yeah. I, look, I look at those great teams, and one of the things the great teams do is they lean on their players, right? It, you know, time after time, I see teams that come into a game and they say, you know what? You know what we're going to do? Stop it. They lean on those players. Those players get targets. Those players get carries. Those players are a focal part of what they want to do. When I see the Browns, it just sometimes seems like they're just trying to mix it up. And like they, they, they want to have such a nice blend of 
run and pass and everyone gets touches. No, there's a reason why everybody don't get touches because they those people are open for a reason. They want those people to touch the ball. Harrison Bryant catching the ball over the middle for a five yard stop route is not something that is optimal. They need the to me. Everything hinges on what the hell this playbook looks like because for me, Kevin Stefan and a lot of people, Jason talks about it all the time. I think the offensive looks, I, I, the offensive looks tremendously different. Why well, ain't seen that? Like <laughs> I can't just imagine that you go from a running team with all these tight ends and play action and boots with Baker Mayfield and Jacoby Brissett to a vertical well, passing game. But what choice did you yeah. have? They didn't have the quarterback to do that. But but I I'm not saying that they shouldn't have. Yeah. I'm just saying I don't know if, if, if Stefanski is capable of coming up like, oh, well, now we pass the ball. We, we, I, I, where, I where mean, is that coming from? We haven't seen that. Well, because we haven't seen it because you haven't had the quarterback. That's we did his first year, though. His first year, we loved the offense. Remember, I, I, the bootlegs, that's, that's fine and dandy. Like, there's a lot of stuff that – his playbook to me, and this is my MO on him, he is great at coaching medium to above average people, right? Because what he calls is going to eliminate all of the, the 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 throws that you have to make as a fr- primetime guy that you can't, he eliminate those. He's going to make everything easy. He's going to make it easy and nice for you to see, and it looks good. But as defenses start to catch up with that and realize, well, they're not throwing the ball here. They don't attack this part of the field. Now the game plan but catches up with him. What great player has he had? Uh, well, OBJ. Uh, OBJ. I don't. I don't the, to me, OG, to OBJ is not a great player. Coming well, in, well, supposed to be. Well, he, he, we he was at the time. About no, he wasn't because he hadn't been good the last two years before he came yeah, in. He, he was he, a hell of a lot better than he played no, he during his time. Not in his league. last two years. He, he was better his last two years in New York he, than he was he ever. Was not. You have you have to look at it like this, man. Like he had Nick Chubb, great player. Nick Chubb played great for him. Odell Beckham Jr. was definitely a great player. Coming into Cleveland, we were thrilled. We, it, were, all we were, but Jarvis, he wasn't great the last two years. He's been Jar- hurt. Well, injuries, okay. Jarvis, he, and he was hurt when he was here. But here's the thing: this is why I always go back to the video. Yeah, Amari Cooper had a great year. Here's last what year. I always go back to the video: yeah. when you see, that's why everybody was confused. I said, "You was mad at Odell, Odell Beckham Jr. for showing." I was open here, you overthrew it. I was open here, you underthrew it. I was. How open. is that Stefanski's fault? But but here's the problem: yeah. Stefanski's fault is this. He should have came in and said, I've said it a hundred times. Yeah. Get in front of the mic and say, look, I got to get this man the football. I got, I got to do this. Well, when you, when you have a quarterback, that's not very good. And a wide receiver who doesn't run the proper routes, it makes it tricky. That's it. That's the answer. Uh, so, he so, wasn't where he was supposed to be. He was open. Just not where the quarterback was looking. I, for. I, I, I look at it like this. The reason you are here today, six, six games to figure out what you're going to do is because you need to understand that I had Kareem Hunt. I didn't use him. I had Nick Chubb. People talk about not giving the ball at certain downs and distance. You can say, oh, that wasn't that good. Okay. But Come on that, now. But that's not fair. What do you uh, mean that's not fair? He didn't Kareem use, Hunt was a number two running back. How much did you want to use him? He didn't even play well uh, last uh, year. You, you got to understand, boy. He wasn't that good. He, you agree, you agree we, with that? We always talked about Kareem Hunt. Not We, we said, can you use him in the same backfield? They use them in the same backfield. It's successful. And, and they then, never did it. No more. We never you know, saw them together. The bottom line is for fair, but the bottom line is for a second running back, Kareem Hunt touched the ball more, more than most second running backs, and he wasn't playing that well. He wasn't as good last Stephon year. Stephon Diggs. What, Stephon Diggs had problems with Stefanski. I mean, how many people got to? How many people got to say? Yeah. I, I, but again, Nick Chubb's been great with Stefanski. Amari Cooper was great with Stefanski. Who else is there? What, the what, only example is is Odell, and the, Odell hasn't had a great season since his third I, year I, with the Giants. He was productive after he went to the Rams, though, Bull. I mean, it's, it's, let me ask you a question. He's a hell of a lot more productive let, let with the Rams. He than got he was touchdowns because he was the number two receiver and playing with a much better quarterback. So let me. He, uh, he was productive, but he played with a much better quarterback. I'll give you I understand. But I'll he was give productive. you. I'll give you an example. People kill Freddie Kitchens. Yeah. Freddie Kitchens' numbers with Odell and Jarvis is better than what Stefanski's was. A thousand for a thousand for Chubb, a thousand for Odell, a thousand for Jarvis, five six hundred almost with Njoku, but he was stuck garbage. So if you gonna say if you gonna I, say, I, I'm I just don't, saying. I don't think, I, 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 first of all, Jarvis is not a great player. 
Jarvis was a great player. Jarvis was a Jarvis, great player. Jarvis was not a great, great player when he got here. No, nah, he was a good wide receiver. He's not a great player. Jarvis, what was his number? Didn't he have he was Jarvis the first Landry, guy to have six straight seasons Jar- of 85 yes, catches? Yes, Jarvis or Landry like that? had Hall of Fame number. No, stop. Uh, Come on. Uh, uh, listen, started uh, 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 look, look, I'll, I'll bring him up. When he started his career, I can't remember what the stat was. You might be able to see it when <laughs> you look at his Hall line. of Fame. You guys uh, are out of your mind. I believe he had uh, Jarvis Landry was good. I'm looking at his numbers he was good right now. Hall, he has not had a single Hall of Fame season in his career. Rip off his yards and catches for his years in Miami. Zero Hall of Fame yeah, number. look at zero. Ready? Yeah, G, I got you. I, I, Hall of Fame's a stretch. Zero, but yeah, he's there. Not Hall of Fame. He's good. Not Hall of Fame. Yeah. Good, right? That's In 2014, said. 84 catches for 758 yards and five touchdowns. Okay. In 2015, 110 catches, 1,157 yards, four touchdowns. In 2016, 94 catches, 1,136 yards, four touchdowns. In 2017. 112 catches, but only 987 yards and nine touchdowns. And then he came from the Nine Browns. touchdowns, though. Zero yeah, I mean, Hall of Fame seasons. So those, I, but, are, those are four oh, really zero good Hall seasons. So, so, so you name me. Not a Hall of Famer. Hey, look, okay, I'm going to ask you a question. Yeah. Name me another Cleveland Brown. I already know the answer to it. That got 100 plus well, that's catches. That's a whole different conversation. No, no. You but, said he was on a Hall of Fame track. He had, he, the argument. He had more catches in his first five years than Hall of Famers. He came out 84 catches as a rookie. You don't go to the Hall of Fame based on just catches. He had nine, so nine. Gee, gee. He did not have any Hall of Fame seasons. Are you, listen, none well, of those seasons were Hall of Fame if seasons. If you look, listen, uh, uh, you talk about 84, 84 receptions, 110 receptions, 94 receptions, 112 receptions. If these, you're just given one stat. None well, he of had those, back-to-back 1,100 yard seasons. Did he have a single Hall of Fame season? What, 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 no. What you I say, don't think he did. When you, say, when, when you say when you say classify a Hall of Fame seasons, what I'm saying is none the, of them were the start of his totality of his career. It was on a trajectory. If he keeps that pace, he would never been a Hall of Famer. Come on uh, now. If you keep getting 112 catches, you sure you will. No, not if you have a thousand yards and four touchdowns. He you had back to back seasons. You know how many of, receivers of have 1100 though? So, so 1100. 1100 is not. You know how that was good when there were 16 games. That, I'm, I'm losing it, Mikey. No, Help what, me here. It wasn't 17 I, listen, games. I, I, I don't know what to say anymore. I, I will come to he both had defense zero on this. Hall of the Fame. The Hall of Fame is not. I, th- I think that might be a little hyperbole. Zero. However, good player, not a great player. You know why? Call up, just just. What do you do is first fun. What were his up, numbers with Freddie Call Kitchens up Chris Carter's year? stats and look at the first four years of his career. What? Well, hold what on. Was, I, I want to add, add two and, things and what, in here. And real Jarvis quick. do nothing with New Orleans. He's injured. He's out of football, basically. He no. had a in 2019 and yeah. was that Kitchens. Yeah. In 2019, he had 83 catches, 1,174 yards, and six touchdowns. Okay. That's good. Did he not season. crack a thousand yards again with Cleveland? Did he? No, did he did he not. Play all the games. He played 16 games that year. Yes. In what? No, in 2020 and 2021. How many games did he play? He played 15 games in 2020 and, and had 840 yards and three touchdowns, and 12 games in 2021, 570 yards, two touchdowns. He play. He started getting hurt, and now his career's you know probably basically over. A uh, good uh, player. Uh, and I want, I want Odell was one, a great player with the Giants until the last two years. Yes. I want to add one context here. Yeah. Um, because I do think this is important, and he does have a ton of catches. There's no denying that. Yeah. But his yards, which does make a difference, he never ranked, and unless I'm looking at it incorrectly, which I do not believe, never ranked in the top 15. In yeah. Receiving yards no, he was not even close. Okay. To now, the now, now, just just to because we know Chris Carter was mm-hmm. a Hall of Famer, and yeah. this is unfair because he got cut by Philly. He had a drinking problem, but it, to start his career, Chris Carter had five catches, 39 catches, 45 catches. 27 catches. Who cares? So, uh, I'm, I'm talking I, about who had a, how many Hall of Fame seasons did he have? Now, hold on. Yeah. I, I said, to be yeah. fair, those were not his Hall of Fame years, yeah. clearly. Yeah. He, when he got released by Philadelphia, he completely turned it around. He had two seasons of 100 catches. Two. Okay. He had. First of all, it's a bad comparison to begin with because the, the era is that now you have guys putting up much bigger passing numbers because there's much more passing yards. I do stay sure. corrected, by the yeah. way. I want to correct myself. I lied. I'm sorry. He did finish 10th in receiving yards in 2016. He was guys 10th. that so hand up guys that bad. had my one bad. top 10 season in receiving yards don't go to the Hall of Fame. No. However, when I look at Chris's career, he yeah. had four years of over 1,200 yards. Right. Jarvis had zero. No. Right. But after that, yeah. uh, he didn't have – he had a fifth where he had 1,100 yards. 
I think I think G. Bush's statement that when he came to Cleveland, he was on a Hall of Fame track. I think that's fair. That's not even close to fair. I think it's fair because he he was, had uh, was, 100 catches, I, 110 catches two was, years in a row, he, and 1,100 yards two right, years guys, in a row. Uh, there's no way he was those going are, to the Hall of Fame. No, I, don't, I don't know what you guys are no, talking about. You, we're not saying those were Hall of Fame numbers. We're saying that's the, that's you how Hall of Fame careers start, Bull. Jay, you can't, am I wrong? Be, no, you're wrong. The, you can't be on a Hall of Fame track. Wow. When you've never had a Hall of Fame season. Oh, okay. So, so let me just read yes, this. Yes, you can. Um, Miami, did, this is this this is three years into his league. Miami, Chris Carter did it. Miami Dolphins receiver Jarvis Landry is the fastest player in league history to reach 200 receptions. The third player in the league leader in receptions, heading to he had he was leading the league in receptions. Okay, you're and giving by one way, statistic. And, and by the way, and by yeah. the way, his teammate Odell Beckham Jr. has 199 career receptions, and he broke his record. So when you look at it, if you look. Trajectory wise, he got here after his fourth year. If you are the quickest in history to 200 catches now, all in three trajectory. years, no, it's not a stretch to say if you continue to get those catches, you're in a Hall of Fame type trajectory. Yeah, he had zero Hall of Fame seasons. You don't go to the Hall of Fame with zero. Hall what of is Fame a Hall of Fame well, season? Chris Carter went to the Hall of Fame. He wasn't in a Hall of Fame trajectory after his first four seasons. He, no, he and wasn't. That's one player oh, anyway. Okay, so let me let me give you this. Frank Gore has he ever had a Hall of Fame season? He did it for a long, long time, time at a very high level. There it is. A very Kurt, high level. Curtis Martin, long time, very, very high, high level. level. Well, yeah, was he ever all, the best in the game? No. No, but he was very, very good for a long so, time. So the you're saying the Browns ruined Jarvis's career? No, what I'm saying. He's not that good. What I'm saying to you, his numbers. He wasn't a great player. He, but he I'm was a good player. Were you excited when great? he came here? I was. Who's, okay. a, who's, a, who's, a, who's better at their job, Jarvis Landry or Stefanski? How do I compare a player to well, a coach? Well, I'm, I'm comparing the fact that... I mean, I would say, at this point, neither is very good. Uh, Jarvis, his yeah, first four fair. years, was a good good player. Okay, well, yeah. all, all I'm saying is, we what we look at is... I mean, not, we, there's 40 receivers... Not 40 strong. 20, 25 receivers better than... Like, you guys are making it seem like every wide my, receiver my, goes to the Hall of my, Fame. My point, was, crazy with my point was never that Jarvis Landry is the greatest ever to put pads on. My point is yeah. that Kevin Stefanski has a real gripe. People have a real gripe to say he does not put his players in the best position I, to, to make plays. I, don't, I, re I really just don't think there's proof of that. Um, I, well, here's the thing. Uh, if you got Kevin... If you got Freddie Kitchens... Yeah. And we think he's a Jarvis horrible coach. Jarvis didn't play 17, 16 games. He was hurt. The, the, I don't know if this makes a difference to either of you guys, but you mentioned Curtis Martin and Frank Gore. Uh, Landry, even when he was making Pro Bowls, was never named to an All-Pro team. I'm not just based on this Hall of Fame yeah. thing. I don't think Frank Gore's a Hall of Famer person. Yeah, I, neither uh, was Gore Frank Gore was All-Pro once, and Curtis Martin was All-Pro three times. So, I don't know if that... Yeah, gives I, you any validation I think we're, what you're saying. And we're comparing by apples the way, to oranges who is the, here, too. With, by uh, the way, with the wide who receiver. was the offensive coordinator for the Vikings when Stephon Diggs had his best season? Stefanski. That's correct. But, but his only year as offensive coordinator. Yeah. That was his best season in Minnesota. Yeah, and he was like, I'm gone. And then he went to Bills, and then they spoon-fed him even more. Like, so but you guys are – you got you can't – it's different quarterbacks, right? You went from mediocre quarterback in Minnesota – to Josh Allen. Of course he's going to put up bigger numbers. So Who was Jarvis's quarterback in Miami? No name gangster. Yeah. Cool. He put up the numbers there. I'll look it up. <laughs> he put up the numbers. I mean, if you want to bring that up. And look, he I, missed games he's due not, to injuries. I, I'm not going to argue that he was a Hall of Famer. That, he, but, yeah. but that's what a Hall of Fame – that's what the first four years of a Hall of Fame career look like. No, it doesn't. For a wide receiver. Yes, it is. No. Well, he had more cat, more more receptions yeah. than any wide receiver in their first four you, years. That's what the start no, of a Hall of Fame career looks like. Most Hall Ryan of Fame. Ryan Tannehill, by the way. Mo yeah. okay. Most of the Hall of Famers. There you go. Most of the guys now who we think of as Hall of, on a Hall of Fame track yeah. are putting up much bigger numbers than he put up those first four years. What, what G is saying is there's never been a wide receiver to put up that many catches in the first four years. Well, who career. knows? You guys have only repeated that 30 times. I didn't understand you were saying that. It's a you pretty, keep giving the the same statistic so, well, over and over because it's a pretty good Did stat. He, has he had a Hall of Fame season in his career? He's I, had. Who, who, he, well, what, what is a Hall of Fame? Yeah. I keep asking you, what is a Hall of Fame season? A, a min, a, 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 to me, at minimum, one of these two things: eight touchdowns, twelve hundred yards. He had nine. He touchdowns had nine touchdowns in one year. He did. That's a fact. But so, how many yards? I did guess he have you just year? talked yourself into your own. No, I, that's not to the me. The season that's with not nine touchdowns, oh. he had 987 yards. Yes, yeah. he missed a thousand by 13 yards. How many catches? 
Uh, 112 for an 8.8 .8 yard per catch. Yeah, so I think, the lowest, I think the here's, of his here's, here's the point. That's the kind of production that we were thrilled when we got Jarvis Landry. Yeah. yeah. We were like, okay, we have a legitimate you've player. You, you've turned him to a Hall of Famer, which of course he's not. No, no, no. No, no you no, keep no, coming no. back. Well, you've said no, now no. five times he was on a Hall of Fame track, which he wasn't. L listen, uh, you, you, you have to take into consideration yeah. when, Jar when they went out and made a move for Jarvis Landry. They had never, and I still contend this. Yeah. The Browns have never developed a, a top flight, bona fide number one receiver. Right. They have never had a top flight receiver in the pecking order. I league. don't know what that has to do with Stefanski. Though. Well, here's here's my point. Yeah. When they got when they got Jarvis Landry, Jarvis Landry was looked at as here. Odell Beckham was looked at as here. Those guys came here. And, and even with well, Freddie, you Odell's numbers his last two years of the Giants, they weren't very good. Well, I mean, well, he missed some time. Well, I mean, he he did have a thousand yards here with Freddie Kitchens. I keep saying it like it, it, you. It's hard to have two receivers with a thousand yards and a running back with a thousand yards. That's very difficult to do. My thing is, it never was about whether or not, you know, this is some Hall of Fame speech for Odell, Odell yeah. Beckham and, and, and Jarvis Landry. It's this. This season hinges on one thing. Can Kevin Stefanski in his playbook get J Deshaun Watson to be not where he was, but to only to elevate and that is yet yeah. to be seen. Can he do I, that well, with an course, aerial pass? Of course attack? it's yet to be seen because he's only played six games and he didn't play well. He wasn't ready yet. Yeah. He was rusty mm -hmm. and it, I, I, yes, it's fair to question. Is he capable of having the creative exciting playbook you need with Watson? However, it's also fair to say he never had the player that he was comfortable doing that with. That's true. You know, that's true. So, all right, uh, we're not going to sell anything. And Amari here. Let's, Cooper let's, did let's, have a great year. He, he had a did. great year last year. He but, did. Well, yeah, but it was how many yards? It was eleven hundred. Yeah. Yeah, like I mean, that those are the years that we read. That I didn't Jarvis say it was had. a whole thing. Yeah, he had a very, you know, it was but he a had great very, year. very, very similar years to Jarvis.